Hi guys and welcome to our second video. I am coming to you from my bed today. I had surgery this morning. Um, I had to have my um, port put back in because in last December my port was removed due to a blood infection. So a port placement is usually an easy procedure, about 15 minutes, but um, because of a lot of scar tissue. I also have some blood clots in my left jugular and my subclavian. I needed to have um, general anesthesia and the procedure did take a little over an hour. Um, so what they did was um, they went above where my old, this was where my old port was and they went above that over here and threaded it into my right jugular. Pain-wise, still can't really feel this part too much. It's numb. My neck, on the other hand, is killing me. So I figured I might as well do this video, keep my mind off my pain. <laughs> now, today's video is going to be basically like for new patients and um, patients, I mean, um, and also for loved ones of patients. I want to explain how the autonomic nervous system works. Um, because it can be confusing and a lot of people don't really know how it works. Um, it, it, when you have dysautonomia, you don't just go to one doctor because it affects so many different systems. So you're going to have a neurologist, a cardiologist, an electrophysiologist, a urologist, a GI specialist, the list just goes on. Um, so let's explain how the autonomic ner nervous system works. And I want to apologize in advance if I am um, losing my words. I am having a lot of brain fog today and I know you all know what that is. So bear with me, please. <laughs> so the autonomic nervous system helps regulate your body process, such as your blood pressure, your heart rate, your respiratory rate, <clears throat> and it works without us consciously thinking about it, hence the word autonomic, okay? Now, the autonomic nervous system, it's part of the nervous system that supplies our internal organs, um, like our blood vessels, um, our pupils, our stomach, intestines, um, kidney, bladder, I'm trying to think of everything. I don't want to miss anything. Uh, liver, lungs, our heart, our sweat and salivary glands. What else? Oh, also our digestive glands, okay? So there's two main divisions of your autonomic nervous system. And one of them is called your sympathetic nervous system. And the other is your parasympathetic nervous system, okay? So our... Autonomic uh, nervous system receives info about its body and its external environment, okay? And that happens through the sympathetic division, <coughs> excuse me, um, inhibiting, inhibiting them um, is usually the parasympathetic um, system, okay? Now, the autonomic pathway entails two nerve cells. One of them is in the brain stem or like the spinal cord. And this is connected to the nerve fibers um, to that other cell, which is located in a cluster of nerves. And that's called the autonomic ganglion, okay? So the ganglia um, for the sympathetic division is located just outside the spinal cord. Um, um, like on both sides of the spinal cord, okay? Um, and the ganglia is for the parasympathetic, and that's on or near the organs that it's connected with. Um, so I hope that helps explain a little bit, but let's talk about what is it control, okay? It controls your blood pressure, it controls your heart rate, your respiratory rate, your body temperature, your digestion, uh, metabolism, um, our balance of water, salt, and calcium in our body, which is why we need lots of water and salt in our diet. 
Um, it also um, controls our um, body fluids such as our, you know, saliva, our sweat, even our tears, um, our ur urination and defecation, and um, also sexual response. So overall, these two divisions work together to ensure that the body is responding appropriately. But in our case, they're not working together at all. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about like some of the symptoms that um, people with dysautonomia get. Um, big one is dizziness and fainting upon standing. Now, just because you don't faint, it doesn't mean that you don't have dysautonomia. Um, there are a lot of people that just have near syncopal episodes. Um, in my case, I have a lot of syncopal episodes. I have had some like where I'll, I'll pass out every single day. Um, I've even had days where I've passed out multiple times a day. But then you do have some patients who never pass out. Um, they just come close to it. When I feel it coming on, I try to um, get to the nearest couch or bed and get my legs up to avoid having a syncopal episode because I have had a lot of injuries due to it. Um, <clears throat> other symptoms are bradycardia and tachycardia. Bradycardia is when your heart rate is too slow and tachycardia is when your heart rate is too high. Now for patients with neurocardiogenic syncope, they deal with a lot of um, bradycardia and hypotension, which is low blood pressure is hypotension and bradycardia is low um, heart rate. So, for example, um, what should happen in a normal response, if you are standing for a period of time, normally your blood pressure may drop. So your brain will kick in and send a message to your heart rate to speed up. For us, that doesn't happen. What happens is instead of our heart rate speeding up, our heart rate drops with neurocardiogenic syncope. So that's where the signals get lost there. Now with POTS, um, which is post-orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, um, patients with that upon standing um, will usually become tachycardic where their heart rate will go extremely high. Um, you can also have very high um, blood pressures. Now, I have had um, times where, because um, I have both neurocardiogenic syncope and POTS. So I've had an episode once where my blood pressure was so extremely high, um, the highest that it had ever been. It was... Um, 259 over 150 and then 10 minutes later it dropped to 75 over 58 that is a huge difference um and sometimes my heart rate um just sitting or laying down can be in the 250s um but i deal mostly with um neurocardiogenic syncope uh, um, symptoms. Um, so my resting heart rate is usually in the 50s. Um, I can drop down into the 20s and 30s. Um, as I have told you before, I have flatlined. Um, my blood pressure is usually extremely low. Um, and when I feel that coming on, like I said, you know, try to get those feet up, lay down, and try to avoid passing out. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Another uh, symptom um, that we can deal with is um, sweating. Uh, some of us do not sweat enough, and some of us sweat too much. Um, I was born and raised in New York um, and then moved to Florida uh, six years ago. This January will be six years. And in the summers, it's hard for me. Um, the heat 
really does affect me. Um, and it is because I am heat intolerant, um, meaning I do not, either I'm not sweating or I'm sweating too much and that can bring on an episode. Um, the biggest thing that we deal, well, I deal with, and I do notice a lot of patients deal with is digestive issues. You know, uh, we deal with bloating, loss of appetite, um, trouble swallowing, um, uh, constipation, diarrhea. Um, I have like severe dysphagia, which is the motility of our esophagus. And my last esophagram um, two months ago, uh, we could not even finish it within, uh, I was only able to take three sips of the barium. And when it would go down, it would stop right here, go up, down, up, down, and then completely up and uh, I would vomit it out. There are times where I cannot even hold my own saliva down. It will just be bubbles coming up. And when I do get like this, I have to go on TPN, hence why we needed to put another um, port in for TPN. Because um, the last three months I've lost 30 pounds um, because I'm having such motility issues and unable to eat um, or keep it down, basically. Um, you know, after I eat, I tend to have a lot of pain, need to lay down. Um, eating's just not enjoyable anymore. Um, it really does bother me when I eat and it hurts. Um, another thing that we deal with is trying to start our urine. Um, urination is such a pain in the butt for us. Uh, to get it to start is is hard um sometimes i'm sitting on the toilet like 30 minutes just to try to pee other times it's completely normal um but most of the time you know like i think all of us can relate where we'll kind of jiggle around and you know like bend over try to put pressure on our bladder um just so that we can urinate um but then when we do finally urinate, we actually um, have a problem emptying completely. Um, so we're constantly using the bathroom to try and empty our bladder. Um, where some people have the opposite and they have incontinence. And um, that happened to me for the first time last year and um, lasted only four months. But that was really, really hard on me. Um, it was humiliating, um, not knowing that I was urinating. Um, that was so very difficult uh, mentally to deal with. Um, and I'm, I'm glad that it only lasted four months and, and it has not happened again since, um, thank, thank goodness. Um, another problem um, that the autonomic nervous system causes, like I said, is um, vision problems. Our pupils do not dilate correctly with light. Um, we can have blurry vision. Um, I know for me, um, if my blood pressure is low, I get these very, very bright um, circles in my eyes and I can't see anything but these bright circles even if I close my eyes. Um, and that's very annoying. Um, I sometimes like everything is very blurry to me. Um, I've always had 2020 vision. I'm just um, just started wearing glasses um, for driving and things like that. Um, another thing that um, the autonomic nervous system uh, controls and we deal with, um, or some of us, not all. Um, I luckily do not have to this is probably the only thing I, I don't deal with is sexual issues for men they can deal with erectile dysfunction and for women they can deal with um, vaginal dryness um, that I don't see as a, a huge complaint amongst um, patients but it, it, it does and can happen um, also I want to talk about brain fog. Um, brain fog actually can be seen on a CAT scan, which I find very interesting. 
Um, brain fog is very hard for me to deal with. Um, I get it often. Um, I'm dealing with it right now. Um, we know what we want to say, but sometimes our words will not come out. Um, and that's annoying. And I'll be having, I can be having a conversation with somebody and literally in the middle of a sentence, I, I can't finish. I, I either don't remember what I'm talking about or I just completely lose the words. In my head, I know the word I wanna say, but I cannot verbalize it. Um, Short-term memory loss um, is very bad. Um, sometimes I just have absolutely no recollection of what happened just a couple of hours ago. Um, that um, I'll have my son tell me, mommy, you just, you know, you asked me that already, or, um, we've already discussed this, and that is very annoying, is the brain fog, confusion, and things like that. Uh, that happens more often than I'd like to admit, but, um, it's a big thing that, uh, we deal with. So, Today, I really wanted to just, you know, talk about how that autonomic nervous system works, um, especially for new patients. Um, it, it's hard to understand what's going on because so many parts of our body is not acting right. Um, the easiest way that I can explain this to people when they ask me what's wrong with me is that basically my brain is sending the wrong signals to my organs. Um, and that's kind of really the only simplest explanation that we can give. So I just wanna thank everybody for all of the messages that I got last night. Um, I'm so humbled and grateful. Everybody, um, Thank you so much for your kind words, and it feels great to know that I have helped some of you. Um, just the response has been overwhelming, so I'm definitely going to keep up with this. Um, I have a lot of topics that I want to discuss, and I also want you guys to, um, like I said, Tell me topics you want to talk about. A couple of things that I'm going to be touching on on days and weeks to come um, is how we deal with this mentally. Um, also, how our loved ones can help us. I want to talk about that. Um, I want to talk about um, being in active episodes and, and how that affects us and so on. So um, feel free to email me a topic you'd like to discuss. Um, you can email me at dysautonomialife at gmail.com or feel free to add me on Facebook, Lisa Abbas, A as in Adam, B as in boy, B as in boy, A as in Adam, S as in Sam. And uh, I will um, be happy to uh, add you, answer any questions, um, so feel free to reach out to me and I'll be talking to you soon. Um, if I do not get back to you right of way, um, please don't be offended. I will be trying to get some rest. I am in a lot of pain, um, but I definitely will get back to you. I promise. Again, thanks for tuning in and I look forward to talking to you all again soon. Bye-bye.